was that, 1913 or 17? I can't remember now. I, I am beginning to forget all the people I used to know. See. Do I remember Louise Bryan? Why, of course, I couldn't forget her if I tried. I can't. Um, I might sort of scratch my memory, but not at the moment. You know, things go and come back again. It was uh, Christopher Street. I was thinking about another street down there instead until it came back that it was Christopher Street. And sometimes I have lapses like that. I'd forgotten all about them. Were they socialists? I guess there must have been, but I don't think they were of any importance. I don't remember them at all. I know that Jack went around with Mabel Dodge, and then he went around with uh, another gal, and then he went around with Louise Bryant. I knew there were shifts back and forth, but it, it never occurred to me if, uh, to never impinged on my own personal life. I like baseball. I don't know what the outside world thought of them, but uh, they were a couple. I mean, you always spoke of Louise Bryant and Jack Reed. I recall his telling me that uh, he had two ambitions when he came to college. One was to be elected president of his class. He didn't know him in the class. No one knew him. The other was to make a, a million dollars by the time he was 25. Now, my idea about Jack Reed is uh, probably different from most, but I knew him well. I knew he was a man of strong views. I knew he was independent. And I have an idea, I may be wrong in this, that his wife was a communist. And that his wife uh, had influenced him, as any wife does, as you know, and I know. Louise Bryant? Well, um, I thought she was something of an exhibitionist. No, I'm not going to talk about people. Don't fool yourself. No, sir. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a... a, a, a purveyor of neighborhood gossip or anything of the kind. That's not my job. He was quiet. He was a nice fellow. I would say if I met him, I would say he was a nice fellow. He was, however, a fighting fellow in regard to principle. I said, I think, that a guy who's always interested in the condition of the world and changing it either has no problems of his own or refuses to face them. Jack, well, I wouldn't call him a playboy, but some people did. Jack Reed's life, short as it was, happened at a time, and all of us, after all, are the victims of our time and place, when he had the opportunity, as a reporter, to be in some very exciting and dramatic places and everybody can be buried in the Kremlin. And he's the only American born in Portland, Oregon. Now, isn't that something? What's he hugging? A statue. Well, I can see that, but what's it a statue of? It's just a statue, Mr. Woodward. How much is it? It's $75. A photograph? That's right, Mrs. Riddissell. This is interesting, Mrs. Schillinger. Uh, Not that it isn't yeah. very nice, but it isn't a paint. Mr. Woodward, I'd like you to look at this. I think I see the intention here. Yes. Eve dominates, you see? The dream dominates the dreamer. It has it's so uh, dominating. Yeah. Yeah. No. Looks blurry to me. The other one looked blurry, too. I think that's the intention of the photographer, Mr. Woodward. What, to be blurry? But perhaps if you looked at it from a different point of view, Louise. you might... This is you? Take a leave of your senses. Don't do it. For a moment. I think I'm 
a fool because I object to my wife being displayed naked in front of half the people I know. Yes, my God, it's a work of art in a gallery. What's the matter with you? You used to call Portland a stuffy provincial coffin for the mind. Maybe stuffy and provincial, but it also happens to be a coffin where I earn it. Well, you can take your living and fill it teeth with it because I can't earn my own living. I have my work. Oh, well, you, you consider a few articles in the Oregonian and the Gazette worth it. I'll tell you what your work is, Louise. That's making itself the center of attention. It's shocking, Louise, trolling you, an emancipated woman of Portland. Now, we're going to say goodnight to these people and go home. I'm going to the liberal You're not going to the liberal party. Don't get in the party. It's very nice, Mrs. Trillinger, all of it. It's very gratifying to hear, isn't it, Louise? Isn't it, Louise? Of course, you know who's going to be at the Liberal Club. Patriotic Americans believe in freedom, and unless we are willing to take arms to defend our heritage, we cannot call ourselves patriotic Americans. I'm proud to be free. I'm proud to be an American. And if the man we elected president decides that our freedoms are being threatened and that the world must be made safe for democracy, then I know I won't be alone in the heating the cloud of patriotism. What is this war about? Each man will have his own answer. I have mine. I am ready to be called. <laughs> Tonight we have with us the son of Margaret and the late C.J. Reed of Portland, who has witnessed this war firsthand. And I, for one, see no reason why we here at the Liberal Club shouldn't listen to what Jack Reed has to say. What would you say this war is about, Jack Reed? Profits. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Reed. Hello. Uh, My name is Louise Bright, and I'm a journalist. And I was wondering oh. if maybe you might have time to give me an interview. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't do interviews. I had a piece in the blast not long ago. Berkman's boy. That's right. Really? Uh huh. <laughs> well, uh, when did you want to do this interview? Now. I, I don't live here. I live in a house by the river. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Two places. <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, use this place as a studio. Uh -huh. Do you like white lilies? Mm. They're my favorite flowers. You're not married, are you? No, I don't think I believe in marriage. Are you married? Marriage? How could anyone believe in marriage? I bet your mother's glad.